morning on the Mojave Desert, a long, lonely highway in the middle of nowhere. Not many people run along this road, but then not many people are like Jeff Keith. Jeff has been running for 3,200 miles now on one leg and a specially designed prosthesis. He is nine days away from his destination, Los Angeles. He's been on the road for eight months. Jeff's cross-country journey began on a warm June day at Faneuil Hall in Boston. The national news media were there, along with family and friends and hundreds of well-wishers, to see Jeff set out on his historic journey. But the real journey began a decade earlier, when 12-year-old Jeff injured his knee playing hockey. It seemed like nothing at the time, but then a routine x-ray revealed a cancerous tumor. On Christmas Eve, 1974, Jeff's leg was amputated. 18 months of chemotherapy followed. Having your leg amputated is one thing, but I think chemotherapy was the most difficult part for me because, number one, you have to lose your hair, and number two, you have to be sick. But you go there every four weeks, you take your chemotherapy for four days, you get sick, and just when you're getting better and you're getting back into things, the next, the, the following, couple of weeks then you have to get ready to get back to go to the hospital and it's a cycle every four weeks you have to go in and get sick and I think as a kid I just wanted to get back and get back I get used to wearing my leg and try to get back into sports and my parents came to me two weeks after the operation and said we're gonna take your skiing in Vermont like Teddy Kennedy does so I was looking forward to it but I was very hesitant I didn't be able to be active ever again and the moment that I hit the ski slopes the moment that I made it to the top of the mountain that's when I realized that someday I'm not only going to be active, but I'm going to excel in sports. Jeff has, without question, excelled. At prep school, he was co-captain of the ski team and finished in the top 10% of all skiers in the Connecticut State Championships. As a senior at Boston College, he played goalie on the varsity lacrosse team. He has competed in two triathlons, finishing well up in the pack. In 1981, Jeff learned about a young Canadian man, an amputee like himself, who planned to run across Canada to raise money for cancer research. Terry Fox ran more than 2,000 miles before the disease caught up with him. He died in an Ontario hospital. Terry Fox's courage and determination had a tremendous effect on Jeff. When Terry ran across Canada, I said to myself, I'm gonna run across America and show to the world that anything can be accomplished. When he began training for his 3,000 mile run, Jeff could barely manage one mile a day wearing his prosthesis. Any more than that caused unbearable pain from blisters and blood constriction in his stump. But with the help of medical technology, Jeff was able to overcome these problems. He discovered bioclusive transparent film dressings, which help reduce friction to a minimum. And he had a special prosthesis made using lightweight plastic a hydraulic knee, and a flexible foot to simulate the movement of a real leg. By the time he began his cross-country run, Jeff had worked his way up to 16 miles a day, eight each morning and eight each afternoon. He maintained that steady pace day in, day out, for eight long months, through the sweltering heat of summer and the bitterest cold of winter, through busy city streets and lonely back roads, through three dozen pairs of running shoes. 
stick it out. You know, you just, you hurt and you just keep going. Jeff was not alone on his journey. He was supported by a crew which included his older brother David and close friends Matt Vossler, Hugh Curran, Paul Totora, and Tracy Fitzpatrick. When I came out on the run, I decided that it was for Jeff and that the most important thing was to get him across America and that our position, our duty as a crew, was to make it as easy as possible for him. I told him from day one to the ending, I'd be there, no matter how long it would take, and he could count on me. There was no second thoughts. I just knew I was going to do it. We were so close at the beginning, Jeff, myself, Paul, Matt, really all of us, that I could not realistically think that we could get any closer. But during the course of our eight months, we've not only become closer, we've also kind of formed like a brotherhood. We kept faith in Jeff. And Jeff, I think most important, has faith in himself. Really couldn't have made the trip without my crew, to tell you the truth, because uh, you couldn't do it alone. I mean, even if you had somebody just to help you and did all the other things, the driving, the cleaning, everything, you just need the diversity of each personality to, like, get you going. Because every day there's something that gets you going. We pray for those people in the world who aren't as fortunate as us to have done the things we've done and seen what we've seen. We pray for the people in Africa who are starving. Amen. 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 It's been uh, one heck of a piece of work logistically. Uh, in between calling the police, getting the routes down, you know, actually going out and driving the route and making sure it's safe for Jeff to run, you know, it's just a lot of work and it's, you know, it's ongoing. We have to call the police all the time. We have to call state officials all the time. Every new state, you know, there's new phone calls to make. Also, it's, it's funny because we've had some reports about the, uh, the Winnebago on the road and I, I think the best one that was calling to the police about this whole thing was once some lady called in and said that she wanted to report a, a, a Winnebago chasing a guy with one leg down the road. The running part of it was actually the, probably the easiest part of it. It's the weather conditions that we had to deal with, road conditions. We ran in tornado watches, we ran in rain, we ran in sleet. Uh, high altitude, snow conditions. But Jeff has, you know, remained strong running-wise. Well, Jeff was always very good in athletics. As a matter of fact, he was good at anything he tried. Uh, besides that, I think he just had a way of, of attacking things. He really never left anything undone. He always finished everything. He always took it as a challenge. And after getting over the initial uh, depression associated with an amputation, he, was, he found out quickly that he could do other things. In some of the months that he had chemotherapy back home, he was trying hard to play baseball. And uh, how the mind can overcome a situation, it got to the point where by the third or fourth treatment of chemotherapy, he, who had gotten so sick after the treatment and would go home and throw up for three or four days, would just get up off that table in the doctor's office and say, Mom, drop me off at the baseball field. And rather than to say, Jeff, I think you need to go home and rest. I dropped him off at the baseball field, and I guess you just have to let go. Jeff was able to use his own experience with cancer and chemotherapy in giving hope and encouragement to hundreds of children in cancer rehabilitation centers across the country. Jeff's visits helped renew the children's hope and determination, just as the children gave Jeff and his crew the motivation to keep going. Well, you look good. Are these your little friends here? They are? Who's this? It's Baby Piggy. Do you have a, that's the name Baby Piggy? And who's this? It's Kermit. Yeah, and who's that right there? Kermit. What? Kermit. Kermit? Is that, which one's your favorite? Kermit. Well, I found that you don't really have to say much when you go to a hospital. It's just the quality of time that you spend with them. The, the best example in any real rehabilitative process is a physical example. And they can have a, a baseball player, a football player come in and talk to them, but those people haven't in, gone through chemotherapy, they haven't lost their hair, they haven't had their leg taken off, they haven't known what it's like to have cancer. But when I go in there and visit these kids and these adults who are going through cancer, they can relate to me because I've gone through it all. 
Well, anytime you go into a hospital and you, and you see a, a little kid who's lost his hair to chemotherapy, get out of bed and, and, and wave to Jeff or shake Jeff's hand, it just makes the whole thing worthwhile. And you're out there alone, there aren't many people out there. You're starting to think and wonder, why am I doing this? You know why you're doing it, you're helping out people. I would have to say the run was the most difficult thing I've done in my life. It was more difficult than I expected it to be, but I never, I was never going to quit. And as I started running and getting to the 1,000-mile mark and the 2,000-mile mark, I started losing weight. I started getting into a rhythm. I started becoming a runner, and I really started to enjoy it by the end. Determination, discipline, hard work, and motivation are essentials in anything in life. And those are the values that I've learned through athletics and that carry me on into my life. February 18th, Los Angeles. After 259 days on the road, Jeff Keith and his crew have reached the last mile. Jeff is only the 18th person and the first amputee to have successfully run across the continent. When he began his run, Jeff's goal was to demonstrate to the world that cancer can be beaten and that disabled does not mean unable. But as Jeff now strides toward the finish line, it is clear that he has proven much more. His accomplishment has served as a challenge to all people everywhere to not be limited by the obstacles they see in their own paths, but to be inspired to overcome them. people out here right now that have dreams and this was this was my dream and there's many people that live today that never see their dreams come true anything can be accomplished once one sets one's mind to it